What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I will soon be uploading a video showing you what it's like to play a handful of games on this Mac Mini, so be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when that video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So before we start, I do want to quickly mention that the spec for this Mac Mini is left down below in this video's description. But as I mentioned, it comes with the M2 Pro, which has a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, along with a 512 gigabyte SSD. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this Mac Mini was Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench runs a number of different tests across the CPU and the GPU and starting off with the CPU test I got single core scores of 6789 and multi core scores of 33706. And when running the OpenCL compute test to test the graphics performance on this Mac Mini, I got scores of 156,567. And when testing the Metal's performance, I got scores of 142,885. I then ran the slightly newer set of tests found in Geekbench 5. And starting off with the CPU test, I got single core scores of 1,480, along with a multi core score of 8,924. And when running the Geekbench 5 compute tests, I got OpenCL scores of 37,992. And when running the Metal compute test, I got scores of 45,031. I then ran the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6. And when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 2,691 and a multi core score of 12,295. And when running the OpenCL compute test, I got a score of 45,502. And when running the Metal compute test, I got a score of 74,305. So sticking to the trend of testing the CPU portion of the M2 Pro, I ran a number of different versions of Cinebench. Now starting off with Cinebench R20, I got a score of 3,166. I also ran Cinebench R23 and when running this version I got a single core score of 1654 and a multi core score of 11766 which gives us a ratio of 7.11. I then ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024, and when running the CPU tests, I got a single core score of 123, a multi core score of 802, which gives us a ratio of 6.52. Also, whilst running the GPU test through Cinebench 2024, I got a score of 2859. So after testing the CPU portion of the M2 Pro in this Mac Mini, I wanted to test the GPU, so I ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity which I ran on and off screen. Now I have calculated the average across the higher and the lower level intensity tasks, but of course as always I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 365.01 frames per second. And for the lower, I got a score of 296.34 frames per second. So sticking to the trend of testing the GPU in the M2 Pro, I then ran a number of different tests from 3 Mark. Now starting off with their wildlife test, it managed to get 60 frames per second on average, and it also maxed the score on this test. And so running the wildlife stress test, I got higher and lower scores of 10,020, which goes to show that this Mac Mini is doing a fairly decent job of cooling down the M2 Pro. So I then ran the wildlife extreme test, which increases the resolution from 2560 by 1440 all the way up to 3840 by 2160 or 4K. Now when running this test at this resolution, I got a score of 9703 with an average frame rate of 58.1 frames per second. So I then ran the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, which runs the Wildlife Extreme Test in 20 consecutive loops. Now the highest score that I got when running this stress test was 9712, and the lowest was 9697. 
which is showing that the M2 Pro in this Mac Mini is being cooled very well. I then ran the Solar Bay test to see how well this M2 Pro would cope when it comes to ray tracing activities. So when running this test, I got a score of 13,460 with an average frame rate of 51.2 frames per second. So once again, I ran another stress test, this time the solar based stress test from 3D Mark. And when running this test, I got a higher score of 13,455 with a lower score of 13,401, which once again clearly is showing that the M2 Pro in this Mac Mini is being cooled very well. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is good as it runs several different tests on all aspects of the system, from the CPU, the GPU, system memory, and the system storage. And when running this test, I got a score of 2,500. I then wanted to test the SSD's performance in this Mac Mini, so I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test. The highest write speeds that I got when running this test was 3,335.3 megabytes per second, with read speeds of 2,986.7 megabytes per second. And when running the Aja Systems disk speed test, the highest write speeds I got was 4,740 megabytes per second with read speeds of 3,366 megabytes per second. I then ran a network speed test. And when running this speed test, I got download speeds of 539 megabits per second with upload speeds of 96.4 megabits per second. I also ran the V-Ray test, and when running this test, I got scores of 7,627. I then ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got scores of 81,917. And when running Speedometer 2.0, the highest score I got was 525. I then rendered the classroom scene through Blender using the CPU in the M2 Pro and it took 9 minutes and 8 seconds to render whereas when it comes to using the GPU in the M2 Pro it took 2 minutes and 20 seconds to render. I then rendered the BMW scene through Blender using the CPU in the M2 Pro Mac Mini. Now this took 3 minutes and 59 seconds to render whereas it took 1 minute and 4 seconds to render when it comes to using the GPU in this Mac Mini. So I ran the latest version of Blender, Blender 4.0. Now when using Blender 4.0, it rendered the classroom scene in seven minutes and 24 seconds. And when using the GPU in Blender 4.0, it rendered in two minutes and three seconds. And when running Blender 4.0 on this Mac Mini to render the BMW scene, it took three minutes and three seconds to render using the CPU, whereas it took 57 seconds to render using the GPU. So I then timed a video export, exporting a full HD video project to H.264 through Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. So the time taken to export the full HD project was 41 seconds, whereas it took two minutes and 35 seconds to export the 4K project. I wanted to further test the graphics performance of this GPU in the Mac Mini. So I ran the Heaven test from Unigen Benchmarking Tools. And so I ran this test at 2560 by 1440. Now when running the test at this resolution, they got average frame rates of 85.8 .8 frames per second with a score of 2162. And when lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, I got an average frame rate of 164.8 frames per second with a score of 4,152. I then ran the Valley test from Unigen Benchmarking Tools and ran this test once again at 2560 by 1440. Now when running at this resolution, I got an average frame rate of 99.6 frames per second with scores of 4,165. And once again, when lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, I got frame rates of 127.4 frames per second with scores of 5,331. I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at a number of different resolutions. So starting off with the studio display's native resolution of 5120 by 2880, keeping the graphic settings to high, we got scores of 2,388 with average frame rates of 12 frames per second and when lowering the graphics to medium settings to 5120 by 2880 we got scores of 2400 with the same average frame rate of 12 frames per second 
and when dropping the resolution to 4K, so that's 3840 by 2160 and keeping the graphics settings at high, we got scores of 3274 with average frame rates of 20 frames per second. And when the graphics settings were lowered to medium and keeping the resolution to 3840 by 2160, we got scores of 3444 with average frame rates of 21 frames per second. I then lowered the resolution to full HD, that's 1920 by 1080 and kept the graphics settings to high. Now when running the benchmark with these settings, I got scores of 10,230 with an average frame rate of 65 frames per second. However, when the graphic settings was lowered to medium settings, but the resolution kept to full HD, I got scores of 10,852 with average frame rates of 69 frames per second. I finally lowered the resolution once again to 1280 by 720 which is standard HD and when running this benchmark at this resolution with high settings I got scores of 15875 with average frame rates of 101 frames per second. And once again, when the graphic settings was lowered to medium, I got scores of 16,877 with average frame rates of 108 frames per second. And so that will be it for today's video. Of course, I will be uploading a number of videos over the coming weeks comparing this Mac Mini to the Entry M2 Mac Mini. And when the inevitable happens and the M3 and M3 Pro Mac Minis are released, I'll also be testing and comparing those machines. Stay tuned as I will be showing you what it's like to play a handful of games on this Mac Mini. So if you are new around here and want to be one of the first 5,000 people, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when a new video goes live. If you've got any questions or if there's anything that you'd like to see further tested on this Mac Mini, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.